Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to automatically assign email addresses to new hires in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Jaden in San Jose, California, one of my Platinum members. Jaden says, we just hired about 20 new employees. I need to assign them all email addresses. We've been using first initial dot last name at our company domain. Is there a way to do that automatically instead of typing them all in? Well, of course, Jade. Now I can help you assign them in your access database. As far as actually setting up the email addresses on your email server, well, that's up to you. But I can make you a list that you can give to your email guy and have him set up these employees. So let's do that in access. All right, before we get started, I got a few prerequisites for you. First, you need to know how to use query criteria. If you don't know how to build a query, go watch my Access Beginner 1 class. But we're going to use some query criteria. You're going to have to know how to do string concatenation, which I'll show you, but it helps to know this stuff beforehand. You're going to need to know what indexing is so we can set our email address to index no duplicates so we can't have two people in a table with the same email address. You should know what null values are and how to use the is null function. We're going to use calculated query fields. We're going to use some string functions, especially the left function. I'm going to show you how to change case. We're going to change our email address to lowercase, so go watch this one. We're going to build an update query to actually set that new email address in the customer table, so that's important. And you're going to need the replace function to get rid of some pesky characters, for example, spaces in people's last names. Those can't go in your email addresses. These are all free videos. You'll find them on my website, on my YouTube channel. There's a link on my website right there, or you'll find it down below where you can click on it in the more section underneath the video. Let's get going. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy it off my website if you want to. And let's take a look at my customer table. Got a bunch of new hires that I just added to the system. Here they are down here. There's a whole bunch of new people. All right, you can see them all right there. All I've got on them right now is first name, last name, and I want to generate an email address if they don't have one already. And the rule is going to be the first letter of their first name followed by a period followed by their entire last name at whatever domain name. So we'll use amicron.com because... In past classes, I used to do stuff like at abc.com or whatever, you know, a goofy domain name. And I would get complaints from people because I was having my customers, my students, send fake emails to those addresses. And it wasn't very nice. So I just use my own domain names from now on. <laughs> okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the email address field in our table is indexed. Not only... Does that mean that searches and sorts on the email field will be faster? But I want to make it so that no two people in the database have the same email address. So we're going to come down to indexed and set this to yes, no duplicates. All right, let's save that. If you have duplicate values in there right now, it'll yell at you, which I don't. And if you want to require that field and make sure that they have to have an email address, you can set required yes, although I rarely use that. I don't really use that field. Because I find that if people have to type something in and they don't know it, they'll just type in garbage to get around it. So it's better to have it's better to have no data than bad data, because at least you can do a query to pull up null stuff. Okay. So let's make a query now to build our custom email address with the rules that we have assigned. All right, so create query design. We're gonna bring in our customer table. That's all we need. Okay. We're gonna bring in the first name, the last name, and the email address. Now, I don't want to change anybody that's got an email address already, so we're going to set the criteria here to is null. That means I'm only going to get people that don't have an email address. And if I run this right now, you'll see, there you go, that should all be blank. All right, back to design view. Now, I can see some people in this list that have last names that are going to be a problem. For example, I got Miles O'Brien. Technically, the single quote is allowed in email addresses, but I, I don't like using that. So I'm going to get rid of that. I can see Reese Davies down here with a dash in it. Again, technically allowed, but I, I don't want to use it. I want just, just, the, just the characters. And finally, this one's a big problem. Van Halen, right? There's space in there. Can't have space in an email address for sure. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fix the last name field so it's just letters. 
Now, I actually do have a filter characters function that I'm going to show in the extended cut for the members, but I'm going to try and do this without any VBA, because I like to have a non-programming solution available, if possible, for the beginners, okay? So we're just going to use a couple of replace functions to replace the characters that are causing problems and make a new field out of it. So go to design view. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is replace that space. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in so you can see it better. Shift F2. I'm going to create a new field called LN1, a new calculated query field, last name 1. We're going to replace last name, the last name field, comma, with a space, comma, and then empty quotes like that. That says take the last name field, anytime you find a space, replace it with nothing. Okay, hit OK, and then run it. Now if I slide down here to Van Halen, you can see right there, there's no space there anymore. Okay, now we'll do the same thing with the other characters that are causing problems. For example, the hyphen and the single quote. But this time we got to replace LN1. So we're going to come over here, all right, shift F2, zoom in. So LN2 is going to be replace LN1, comma, a single quote, comma, nothing, just like that. And I'm going to copy this so I have it in my clipboard. Ready? Hit OK. All right, and make sure that it puts the brackets around the LN1, because it, if it puts quotes around LN1, that's not right. That says replace the string LN1. We don't want that. We want the field LN1. Okay, and then one more replacement. Shift F2. I'm going to paste in what I had. LN3 is going to be replaced from LN2. I want to get rid of dashes. Okay, so there's three replace operations. And finally, LN3 is going to be what I want. All right, looks good. Scroll down. All right, Reese Davies has been fixed. And where's O'Brien? O'Brien has been fixed. Perfect. Okay, now let's just lowercase this whole thing. And our last name is set. So how do we lowercase something? Well, that's easy. Shift F2. All right. We're going to say that LN4, the final one, is going to be L case of LN3. All right. L case converts to lowercase. And now if I run it, all right, there's my final last name. Looks good. If there are any other crazy characters in here that you want to get rid of, you know how to do it, right? Just, just keep going. Okay. Let's deal with the first name. For the first name, all I want is that left first character. All right. So come in here, design view. Scroll over a bit, right? Come in here. Shift F2, okay, FN1 is going to be, I'll do two steps at once, all right? We're going to go the, the L case, we're going to lowercase it, all right? Left of first name, comma one, and then two closed parentheses, all right? So take the left first character, the left one character of the first name, right? And then L case that, hit OK, and run that, and there you go, there's your first initial, okay? Now we have everything we need to build a new email address field, which will make another field for that right here. Okay, shift F2. We're going to call it new email colon. What's this going to be? It's going to be FN1. That's the first name initial and a dot, a little string concatenation there and LN4. That's my last name for, right? The final last name. All right, and if you don't want to have to change this function later on, you could make this, like, call it last, la you know, last name final or whatever, but this is fine for this example, okay? And at amicron.com or whatever your domain name is, okay? Hit okay, run it, and there's your final email address. Let's, uh, let's resize this here. All right, and then we can see it right there. Look at that. Looks good. Beautiful. All right. Let's save this as my new email queue. Okay, so this is just a select query now. We're just building this guy. Okay, next we're going to make an update query to update this field based on this field. Could you all, could you do it all in one query? Yeah, you could. You could do it all right in here, but I like doing it in a separate query. So create query design, especially if you're a beginner. Okay, so what we're going to bring into this query is we're going to bring in that query we just made, new email queue. Now this is still updatable. And you can tell because if you open up new email queue, if you slide down to the bottom, you see that new row appears, that means you can still make changes in here. Okay, I can still come in here and do that and it, it's editable. Okay, sometimes if you make really complicated changes in here, this becomes not updatable, which that's a problem. But this one, we're fine. 
Okay, now we're going to turn this into an update query. So go to query design, change the query type to update. Okay, what do I want to update? I want to update the email field. Criteria is null. You still got to make that is null just, just, just in case. Just in case you make a change to the other one because the only data coming through from the other query should be only the null records, but you never know. You might come in here later, make a change. So you want to make sure even in the update query, you use that is null so you don't overwrite any old email address. Just, just trust me. Okay. Now, what are we updating it to? We're updating it to new email. Now, the little IntelliSense is coming up there. It's going to try to make it new email queue because it sees that's the name of that. But you don't want that. All right. You don't want that. So just, just hit escape and then hit tab. And now see, look, look, look. See what it did? See what it did? It put the quotes around there. No, that's bad. Bad. All right. Otherwise, if you if you do this now, all of your email addresses will say new email there. All right. So make sure you put the brackets around that so you don't get messed up there. Okay. Because it sees a similar field to what the name of the query is. And so it does that. And then it puts the quotes in there. Okay. So this is what you want. I'll zoom in a little bit so all the kids in the back row can see that. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's run the query. All right, we get an error message. What does it say? It says zero fields due to type conversion. Okay, that's fine. One record due to key violations. What does key violations mean? Well, since our email address is now a key, okay, and it's indexed no duplicates, that means that one record must have been a duplicate, so it's not going to update. I actually have a whole video on this error message as well. Usually it's with append queries, but you get it with update queries too. Okay, I'll put a link to this down below as well. Okay, so let's say yes. Let's let the query run, and then we'll investigate the table and see what the problem is. Okay, so I'm going to save this query. We'll call this my new email update queue, my update query. So I can save this for the future. So, you know, next month I get 50 new hires. I can still run the same query again. All right, let's close this now, and let's take a look at my customer T and try to see what the problem is. Now, if I sort based on the email address, it should be easier to find. Okay. The, oh, oh, here's an empty one right here. Okay, that's the one that couldn't update. Regina Barkley. Well, let's let's sort by last name, comma, first name here. So I'll select both of these, right-click, and sort. And, oh, there's the problem, right? We got Reginald Barkley and Regina Barkley. It's R. Barkley. Okay, so that's why I couldn't create the duplicate email address. Now, I'm going to go through in the extended cut for the members how to deal with that. All right, you can use the first two characters, which in this particular case is going to be a problem. All right, all the way out to the whole Regina is inside of Reginald. So we'll deal with that in the extended cut automatically. But for now, maybe go, you know, middle initial or R2, whatever, R2. <laughs> all right, I'm going to copy that and paste it up here. And this person could be R.E. Barkley, which, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a unique email address, but at least it's not, you know, at least it's not R. Barkley. So you'd have to figure out what to do in that case. But there you go. There's your new email address. Now, everyone in the system's got a new email address. See that? Now, this, you can copy and paste. You can email it over. I'd send all three of these things over to your IT guy, your email guy, and say, here's the new email addresses I need set up. Go do it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> if you want to learn more about this stuff, in the extended cut for members, we're going to do it a whole different way. We're not going to use an update query. We're not going to build a new email address using query calculated fields. No, 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 no. It's all done in Visual Basic. We're going to use a record set loop to loop through all the customers that don't have an email address. Okay. We're going to write a function called assign new email that will build the email address. We're going to use the whole first name. Okay. And then check to see with a DLOOKUP if that name exists. And if it doesn't, then we can use it. If it does, We'll add a two on the end of it or a three or whatever we have to add. All right. And then loop again and check it again. And that's all covered in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. There's a lot. I think we're approaching, what, 300 now? And uh, gold members can download these databases and get the code vault. with All kinds of cool stuff. So what are you waiting for? Join right now. I got to say it like Kirk. What are you waiting for? Join right now. Con. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, 
one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus my Code Vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any Tech Help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for Tech Help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.